Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So markets got hit today. And before we get into the market action, I just want to say, as, as technical traders and guys that navigate the market on active levels, meaning one to three days, intraday, sometimes uh, swing trades, this and that, you know, we, we follow a set of rules. And there's probably about 20 rules that you know, are in our system that keeps us sane, safe on the right side of the market, as well as lots of different indicators that we use, whether it's chart patterns, whether it's RSI, whether it's the oscillator, whether it's volume, whether it's moving average, whatever it is, there's lots of things that we use you know, before we make a decision on how we're gonna allocate our trading accounts, whether it's our active trading account, our intermediate, our swing, or macro. You know, and it's different for everyone. But I will say that the moving averages are one of the best indicators to keep you on the right side of the market. Now there are guys out there that say moving averages are like, you know, monkeys, you could, you could uh, balance it on your head, or you could balance it or make a mustache out of it, or, you know, get some potassium from it. You know, it's people that just, you know, are arrogant and all they want to do is mock and make themselves look different, kind of like in, back in elementary and high school, people who are insecure and, you know, the bullies on the, on the playground who try and make everyone else look as if uh, their system doesn't work. But meanwhile, you know, I know a lot of people in the VTF are having you know, a very good year. I know a lot of people who have you know, been out of the way. I know a lot of individuals you know, just on the right side of the market, especially after the, the V bottom that we've seen. And you know, I'm going to show you how moving averages can keep you on the right side of the trade and keep you away from the pain or away from fighting a trend or away from just being in trouble. Because we typically like to be in a particular stock when it's above the 8 and 21 day moving average. And then combine that with a tight pattern and relative strength you know, and, and potentially volume, then we use our tier system on getting in, and then we use our day one through four strategy on, on adding and then selling and trimming and trailing, and then maybe selling it and waiting for a new you know, opportunity. But anyway, we look at the spiders. Okay, the spiders, ever since the V bottom, okay, um, which was right here, that was below all the moving averages that, you know, were, you know, which was somewhat of a short during this time period where I think a lot of traders actually made money, didn't lose money because you had a lot of tradable setups. You know, this is when, you know, the 8 and 21 day moving average was lost after playing with it for a little bit. You know, so right up here, okay, after a, a trend above the 8 day moving average, it's now getting a little wishy-washy. And today, you had a, a pretty decisive move below it, okay, and you know a spot to maybe get out okay in the spiders 107 um or sorry uh, the eight day on here was um like just say like 20730 and it did go all the way as low as uh 20690 today before coming off the lows and you know it gives you some clues that the market's getting um maybe losing some momentum maybe it needs time just not the same momentum that we saw and now you have a channel here and if you got short right there, congratulations. If you, you know, cleaned up a little bit, you also um, you know, are doing the right thing because who knows how much time this needs or who knows if you know, we want to test the, the 21 day or even look how far down the 50 day is, okay? Especially with some of the action that we've seen out there. You look at the Qs. The Qs just broke the eight day moving average, okay? One thing we watch since the entire move from the lows. And I know a lot of guys out there that have been trying to short the cues, short the tech, all in this, bash at that. But meanwhile, it's been above this moving average for the majority of the time with lots of trades along the way. First time it's below, traders take notice. You also had a little bit of a wedge pattern there. And you wanna put another indicator on it, you know, where the spiders made new highs within some of these days, the technology sector never did. The cues never did. So I'll give you some clues that if you wanted to short this below 105.14, you did kind of well, especially considering how weak some high beta names have been. So does this mean rally's over? No, it means that it got choppy, we lost some momentum, and now you might want to look for, for shorts or, or wait for a signal to perhaps you know, buy a dip, whether it's a 21 day or, or below. But right now, a slight change has taken place where the speed and the composure is a little different. And if you go just say to the IWM, you know, this also looked, you know, pretty good, right? It looked pretty good. You know, it was holding above this area, tried to break out above this high and closed on the lows. So that just shows you that it's not ready to go or it's not ready to break out above what has been a new upper channel. Okay. There's, you know, it also came from down here. So I mean, momentum was lost. Does it mean that it's going to break this area and make new lows in the year like people are ranting? You don't know that. 
All you know is if you were long the IWMs and you trade actively, maybe you get out, maybe you look a little bit short and then see how we handle this lower level. Okay, it's been a nice trade since you know, this little uh, reversal right here and when it broke this descending channel and then started to ride the eight day until finally you had actually had an outside day here and then it just started to become choppy again. Also, the banks, just to take a quick look, um, you know, we, we started focusing on this last week you know, when it was ready to break out and had a nice breakout, it's extended from the eight day. You could also look at it that way too. Above the eight day and 21 day, you try and be long. And then when it gets extended and you have day one, two, three, four, five, you do not add or initiate on the day, day five up. Because chances are, if you buy the strength, you know, it pulls in, waits for the eight day to catch up and you don't hold through. And then at some point down the road, it makes new highs. And you know, you just had a bad entry and exit. So at this point, the XLF is still above Friday's gap, and the banks did act pretty well today. You know, then you flip the coin around. Okay, if it's below the 8 and 21 day moving average, it's an avoid. Okay, if it's below the 50 day and the 200 day, it's uh, don't even touch unless you're doing some small little three minute, you know, bar trades or five minute bar trades, and the XLE has been one of them, right? This was, you know, that, that low you had here. And first of all, how could you have seen this even without a big research team? You know, you could have said, okay, here, it was above the 8 and 21 day moving average, and then this was the first time it broke below, right there. You know, came in, whatever this might have been, the 50, came back, retested, and then the XLE has been low, below, same way. You know, they, they, you can flip them over, below the 8 and 21 day moving average for the majority of this move. And then look how it got extended from them down here. So that's how it came so oversold before the bounce, and then it didn't reclaim much, okay? And then you had this big gap, and now it closed in the dead lows through a prior pivot and granted some people might be short if that's what you do okay it's had a big move down from there so that's something I wouldn't do but it's it has has not given you any clues to really be long here okay you had a small little oversold trade there which some were pointing to an oversold bounce but then it reversed and then stayed below all the moving averages so that helps you as your guide and the OAHs have been even worse you know look at that that didn't even attempt to fill that gap you had a gap down um, when the markets rallied, there was a small little tiny move off of the lows, but then, you know, it stayed down here creating a, a pretty big bear flag, okay, and then boom, more downside follow through. Traders that I know are not buying this. Why would they? It's below the 8 and 21 day moving average. If anything, that's something to short. So, you know, if that's you, cool. But at this point, I don't think I've even traded the OHs, you know, since this little bounce here. And granted, yes, I could have been net short whatever you know that's not my style that's not my strength and then you go to high beta tech tesla got to give you guys should be you know subscribing to off the charts because laz who runs that tends to have a little bit of a bearish nature and when things are looking bearish he, he gets in there and you know he listed you know this as a as a short right in here and i also had it in my notes saying get out of the way if it breaks 240 and look at this does tesla look like it did when it was above the 8 21 day moving average for the majority of this whole run no but then you know, broke it here before getting back above it, making another run. And now, actually, as you look at it here, you know, this it looks like, you know, you have a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and it's just breaking the neck. And it also broke, you know, this trend pretty much here. So anyway, you know, this, this has been a broken stock. And I, have, I don't think I've traded it in days. And again, people will be like, why aren't you short it then? Okay, I could be short it, but... Um, I, I'm not. It's better than being long it and fighting it, which none of us are. And what did it do here? Broke 240s below all the moving averages. Now it's below the 200 day. So sometimes it's a, it's a fake out if it goes below the 200 day and reclaims it, or sometimes it stays below. And if it doesn't reclaim that, just like you saw in the oil stocks, you know, that's real selling. And, and it's just, that's it. You can lean on it if you're a good short seller, stay as a short seller and, you know, you know keep, keep getting paid. Netflix also below all the moving averages, okay? Not strong. Um, big gap after earnings. Below the 200 day. Broke this one off the charts, put it in. And now it looks like it's gonna make another trade to the downside. Haven't touched this one in a while either because it doesn't fit my parameters to be long. And you know the markets have been strong, so I've been trying to find strong stocks versus weak stocks to short. Because again, that's not my style, but this looks like it could break this. And below all the moving averages, that was different here, right? Remember when it ran, when the momentum came back, it was above the eight day this entire time until what? Broke the eight day, played around with the eight and 21 day and got wishy-washy. And then we don't take stocks into earnings anyway. And then gap down, reflex bounce, got rejected 
there and then boom, back to lows. And look at Amazon as well. Amazon, you know, Cyber Monday came, uh, they, they sold it, you had an engulfing down bar, okay, and went back below the 200 day after that fake out above it, so to speak. You did have a tradable trend here, but then on an event like Cyber Monday, if it gets sold and it engulfs a big range, engulf this entire range, you get out of the way. And I think most people have probably in the VTF have been shorting it and not trying to buy it. And it's, again, kind of broken and now you just need tactics. There's been so many broken trades. Even Apple. I don't think I traded Apple once today. Everyone's like, Red Door, when are you going to buy it? I'm like, you know what? The composure in my mind has changed. You know, I, everyone was actually even upset when I, when I, has, I wasn't really involved from the last move from 115 to, to 119 because I was just like, it's extended. It's an accident waiting to happen. If you write on a piece of paper, this is an accident waiting to happen, it might keep you away from the trade. If you write on a piece of paper, is this really worth it? It might keep you away from a trade that's in the middle of a range that's not compelling. Those are two things that if you put on, the, on your desk, could keep you away from making a wrong decision or over trading. So you look at Apple, now Apple was very calculated here when your last earnings call, when it gapped up and I traded a long versus that. I think we traded it pretty well into that trend. Then it went sideways and we then, you know, talked about the tier two into that. Then I was done and then this became very wishy-washy. And then look what it did up here. When it broke this upper area and then had that mini flash crash, <laughs> it kind of shake, you know, it shook the tree. It no longer was following the eight day the way it was since earnings. So something changed. You'd be a bit more careful with Apple. From here, you had a reactionary low into what? In, in, uh, you know, in my land, they call that uh, a red dog reversal, which means another negative. Okay, and I posted the chart this morning where it pushed through an area, and I was long on this day, sold it on this day, some strength, some when it went back below 116.35 when the momentum changed, and then, you know, and then that was some signal to short it. I didn't short it, I just stayed away. And then on uh, Friday, it opened up and then traded back below uh, Thursday's low to give you confirmation. And then today it was upgraded pre market and wouldn't find the friend. And now it's below the 821 day, different than this part of the trend. So now you got to be a tiny bit more tactical. Kind of put in a, a double bottom perhaps versus this. It came a little bit off the lows. It could, but it hasn't given you a signal enough to, to do it as a tactical trade. And, um, at this particular point, I've been you know, very inactive and I'd love to get a new buy s signal in Apple. But for right now, it's still, you know, it's still trying to prove that it's worthy of that. So if you sold it here or you sold it here, you know, now we look for an entry. I would like to see um, some kind of volatility where it could come into here and that would be a, a nice buy. You know, not saying it's going to make new highs by the end of the year, but you know, something to look at, especially if you sold well here or you sold there or you've been flat during this time period, there's an opportunity here. But it's different than when it was following the eight day and it was trending higher. That wasn't, there was no sell signals along this way, you know, and it's done in many different times. So now we'll see what goes on here. As far as, um, let's see, um, Nef we did Netflix, um, Google. <laughs> Google, I, um, you know, got a little hurt in on Friday. It happens. I tried to time Google, um, you know, anticipating that this descending channel would uh, break to the upside, but it was something that I was very skeptical on or I was very quick with because it's below all the moving averages. It's relatively weaker. It's not stronger. So it's something that I kind of avoid. But on this first update, I said, okay, I'll try it. And then, you know, got downgraded and uh, got out of it pretty well Friday. And then I'm not ready for it again. I'm not, I'm not touching it until maybe something changes here and it gets above both moving averages. Other than that, it's, it's an avoid. And it's been an avoid for a while. You know, none of us are sitting in Google when it's below all the moving averages, below the 200 day, not worth your time as an active trader. So lots of ways to use the moving averages to your advantage to be on the right side of the trade versus the wrong side of the trade. You know, if you, if you try and short a, a, a trend that's riding that, you know, you might run out of money, even though someone else might just run out of ink. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you're putting your money on the line as a real trader, that you have the wherewithal to fight a trend using opinions until the market confirms it. And then if the market confirms it, then you do it. Same way with, you know, a lot of people like, Red Dog, when are you coming out with your 2015 thesis? We loved your 14 thesis, the 13, the 12. You are whatever out of whatever. You know, and if you want to look at it, you could actually Google, you know, Redler uh, 2013 thesis. It'll talk and show you what I talked about for 12, for 13, and 13, for 14, and whatever. It's actually a good way to um, look at charts and look at what I look for and it's a good educational lesson besides seeing that, you know, I happened to <laughs> knock on wood, 
be right a little bit more than wrong, but I also wait for the market to confirm my thesis. So even if I come out with eight potential situations for next year, you know, I'm not in all eight, you won't see that happen until they start to turn on. So as a trader, we have thoughts, and then when the market confirms your thoughts, that's when we execute. If the market doesn't confirm my thoughts, I'm not gonna be in there taking pain until that happens, because I'm not that smart. So I wanna wait and I wanna be careful because we also, we are market timers, so you know, we have that flexibility where we could be in and out pretty quickly. You know, and then the same thing with the, you know, the banks. You know, some people are like, why'd you sell Goldman today? You know what, it, it still looks really good. You know, uh, got involved in, in this area, and then I sold some strength, and then it traded below the prior high, so I figured maybe it does a little bit of a topping tail and I'll always be able to be quick to get back in. And, but sometimes, you know, you'll try and be too perfect. It can gap up tomorrow, go to 200, which I still think it can. But, you know, if, if I don't get back in, you know, it's kind of, uh, it'll be harder for me to grab it. You know, but this was your calculated trade right there. Same thing goes for, for Morgan Stanley. You know, that I actually sold. Um, I think I sold it on Thursday of last week, but it was a nice trade also. I, I bought it here, added, sold there. So that's a good trade, right? That's where we look for good trades, and I, and I missed out on these two days. But it is what it is, and this still actually looks strong. But according to my system, you don't just initiate Morgan Stanley up here when it's so extended from the 8 and 21-day moving average. So here you had you know, a nice tight pattern along with turning up 8 and 21 days showing accumulation. So boom, that could have been a good money trade. So Bank of America also, you know, we got involved um, last Wednesday, I believe, right here, okay, and um, added to it on Friday, and then I sold some strength, tweeted about it, saying I'm in the least amount that I've had since last week, and then unfortunately it was a little too tight, and when it came back below this prior high, I think I got stopped out, but I think, you know, I'll be able to accumulate again within this flag for a potential move above today's high you know, to 18 plus. But I didn't just like the way the market, you know, got a little choppy here. So I want to see this continue to maybe go sideways and, and prove that, you know, we don't see some kind of corrective activity. Because the whole consensus right now is saying the S&P is going to go to 2100, 2120. And the, this year has really been like once the consensus gets too loud, you, you got to be a bit careful because it hasn't rewarded the consensus. And um, so... I'm not part of the consensus. I try and be part of a trend, but if, again, oscillators get too overbought or trend gets too loud, I tend to just you know, keep my ear a little bit more open and my instincts a little bit more on alert because something could change. And we've seen the blind side happen lots of times. No gold today, okay, um, reversed after, you know, actually it was up 50 cents and reversed. And, you know, it's still kind of erratic and random, and, but it's holding higher. Um, for you gold bugs out there, it still has a pulse. Okay, but look at the way it's been going up. It's just so tricky. If you were long here, you probably got stopped out. If you went short on the close here, you got stopped out. And then here, it looked you know, like it was over again, and then it came back up. It just you either have to say, I'm in in gold, and I have a thesis to be long. But if you did that during the past year or two <laughs> on this weekly chart, you know, you've been hurt. And as traders, we do not do that. Okay, this trend once broke here, okay, and then, um, broke again on this wedge here, and then really broke when it traded below that 150 there. And then you've had another wedge here. So again, look at gold. Gold is below all the moving averages on a weekly basis. So, no, you know, it's hard to have a thesis there. You know, you, you're better off, um, I guess, using the trends. And right now, the, the trends have a little bit more of a pulse than it's had in the past. And as an active trader, I guess, I should take my, um, my likes and dislikes away from this. And if it happens to trade through this intraday where, where I'm in control, maybe there's another trade to take this out and, and retest some of those levels. But for right now, you know, I'm just very inactive. Try to do you know, some trading from here, which worked a little bit until that day. And then I just, I'm avoiding, but it doesn't mean you have to avoid. It just means that you need to um, have your own wherewithal for it. So with all that said, just want to let you know that, that traders are dynamic. As a technician, we no longer just look at charts. We, for the last three, four years, we've had to know what Europe's doing, what Draghi's doing, what the currencies are doing. You know, you have to know a little about a lot, and then you need to know a lot about your own process. So this way you could execute on it quickly. You could execute it on it, execute on it when, you know, when things change. 
and that's what we try and do. When things change, we try and change a little bit so we don't get left behind or turn a little paper cut into a gusher. And one part of my system is using the moving averages, and that's the 8 and 21 day. And then once those break, it turns into a whole new move av moving average game. And if you get out at the 8 and 21 day, you actually have the chance during a corrective process to test an RDR at the 100 day or the 200 day, and sometimes those hold and you get a good swing trade. So if you sold upper levels, you could test mid to lower levels, just part of trading the risk ranges or whatnot. Um, so lastly, I just want to say, I, I, uh, if you follow me closely, you could look at my Twitter, you could see that um, I gave myself an early Christmas present. I blocked a few individuals and I unfollowed a few individuals. And if you have a few people in your ear that are basically noisy to you, <laughs> I, guarantee, I think that you should do the same. That um, it's good to you know, have conflicting views, but when they get noisy and arrogant and just don't add any value, just get rid of them. You know, I, I view life with a you know, half full glass try and put a dose of common sense in there and I just try and um, I just be good to people because you know it's nice to be nice <laughs> anyway have a good night see you tomorrow at the morning call with Brittany